Good afternoon to our outlook delegate. There has been renewed interest in developing agriculture in Northern Australia, partly reflecting the opportunities presented by expected growth in food and fiber demand in Asia, and the proximity of Northern Australia to Asian markets. Agriculture is a significant contributor to the Northern Australian economy with cattle, sugar, horticultural products, cotton, and cereals, the main industries. Around 45% of the national herd is located in Northern Australia. The gross value of agricultural production is ex estimated to have been over five billion a year. Expanding agriculture in Northern Australia presents a number of challenges. It will require capital investment for infrastructure support and developing efficient supply chains for agricultural commodities that are suited to the environment of the North. It will also be critical to identify and establish export markets for agricultural products that are currently being produced or could be produced in Northern Australia. Because growth opportunities in domestic agricultural markets are relatively limited and prices decline when domestic supply exceeds demand. This can pose particular challenges for agricultural production in Northern Australia, which is exposed to relatively high transport costs when selling into markets in Southern Australia. Therefore, developing export markets is essential for expanding agriculture in Northern Australia. Today, I will use a few examples to demonstrate the market opportunities in Asia. I understand other speakers will address the issues of investment and regional development for Northern Australia. Over the past few years, ABS has undertaken significant research on the prospects for growth in Asian food demand to 2050. Food demand in the Asian region is expected to increase because of a larger population, growth in per person incomes, and increasing urbanization. This growth in food consumption in Asia is expected to provide many export opportunities for agriculture in Northern Australia. But realizing these opportunities can only be achieved if agricultural production can be profitable and competitive in Northern Australia. At the Outlook Conference last year, ABS presented its projections of long-term food demand for a number of major Asian economies, including China, Japan, the Republic of Korea, and Southeast Asia as a whole. Delegates who are interested in opportunities in these markets can download the relevant research papers on the ABS website. As the food consumption pattern in emerging Asian markets continue to shift from traditional diets to more varied diets, growing demand for meat, dairy products, and horticultural products is expected. Import demand 
for agricultural products in Asia will increase to supplement domestic production in meeting the rising food consumption. Rising meat consumption in Asia will lead to expansions of Asian pig and poultry production, as well as cattle feedlots, presenting opportunities for exports of feed grains and other stock feeds, such as oil seeds, meal, and hay. Over the past year, AB has continued its research on food demand prospects in Asian markets, and I will present our recent work on long-term food demand in another two important Asian markets. They are India and Indonesia. I'm using India as an example to demonstrate the emerging opportunities that are expected to rise in the future. Currently, Australian agricultural exports to India are less significant in value terms compared with some other Asian markets. In 2013-14, Australian agricultural exports to India were around 600 million, consisting mostly of pulses, tree nuts, and wool. The importance of Indonesia to Northern Australia would be obvious to many delegates. Indonesia is the largest export market for agricultural production in northern Australia. For Australia as a whole, Indonesia is the third largest export market for agricultural products only next to China and Japan, and the largest market for live cattle and sugar exports. Now, let me start with India. India has been one of the world's fastest growing economies and has a, self, a food self-sufficiency policy. The Indian government subsidizes consumer prices on stables such as rice and wheat and provides guaranteed producer prices for many agricultural commodities. With the population of India projected to increase from 1.2 billion in 2010 to about 1.6 billion in 2050, there will be significant challenges for India to maintain its self-sufficiency policy. Toward 2050, rising household incomes and urbanization are expected to lead to higher intake of vegetables, fruit, wheat, and dairy products. Between 2009 and 2050, the real value of vegetable consumption is projected to rise by over 180%, fruit by close to 250%, dairy by over 130%, and wheat by over 40%. The increases are driven by greater quantities demanded and not because of higher prices. For these commodities, the projected increase in domestic production in India is smaller. As a result, imports are projected to increase. By 2050, imports of vegetables and dairy products are projected to be around US 47 billion and US 13 billion in 2009 US dollars, respectively, compared with negligible vegetable or dairy trade in 2009. Imports of fruit are projected to be around US 58 billion in 2050 compared with exports of less than US 1 billion in 2009. Projected higher input demand for fruit 
and vegetables in India may be of particular interest to Northern Australia. Of course, it is noteworthy that market opportunities in India and other Asian markets will also be available to producers and exporters in Southern Australia, as well as our competitors around the world. Now, what about Indonesia? Indonesia is a growing market for Australian agricultural exports. In 2013-14, the value of Australian agricultural exports to Indi Indonesia was around 3 billion. Wheat exports were around 1.2 billion, and exports of livestock and livestock products were over 1 billion. The value of Australian live cattle exports to Indonesia was close to half a billion in 2013-14. Over the next few decades, sustained economic growth, population increases, and continued urbanization are expected to change Indonesia's demand for food. Not only will total food consumption increase, but diets are expected to become more diverse. With the population in Indonesia projected to increase from 240 million in 2010 to 320 million by 2050, the value of food consumption is expected to be four times larger in 2050 compared with 2009. For many commodities, the value of consumption is projected to rise from a very low base, reflecting widespread poverty and the large rural population in 2009. By 2050, 72 percent of the Indonesian population is projected to live in urban centers with higher incomes than the rural cohort. It is this expected transition of the population and income growth that are driving the magnitude of project food consumption growth. The real value of Indonesia's agri-food production is expected to more than double by 2050 compared with 2009. This expected increase is driven by higher production of beef, poultry, starch stables, vegetables, fruit, and rice. For some agricultural products such as rice, and beef projected higher production partly reflects Indonesia's domestic policies that favor their production. However, there will be increased competition for resources for food production in Indonesia because Indonesia has a competitive advantage in the production of non-food and cash crops such as palm oil, natural rubber, coffee, cocoa, and spice. Despite Indonesia's policies, which support food production and food self-sufficiency, the competition for resources from non-food crop production is expected to impact on food production. As a result, food imports are projected to rise over the long term. Toward 2050, Indonesia is projected to increase imports of a wide range of agricultural products, including beef, horticultural products, dairy products, sugar, and wheat. Because of its proximity, Northern Australia is well-placed to benefit from increased food demand in Indonesia, especially for beef, 
horticultural products, and sugar. However, there will be strong competition in the Asian market. Australian exports, whether they are produced in northern or southern Australia, will compete with not only domestic production in Asian countries, but also products from other international suppliers because other export, exporting nations can be expected to also respond to increase the Asian demand by increasing their exports. Finally, let me summarize. Renewed interest in agricultural development for Northern Australia is being driven, at least in part, by increased food and fiber demand in Asia. As demonstrated by my presentation on market prospects in India and Indonesia, growth in Asian food demand presents significant export opportunities for agricultural development in Northern Australia. However, growing food demand in the Asian economy does not necessarily guarantee business success for agricultural development in Northern Australia. Agriculture in Northern Australia needs to be competitive to capitalize on the opportunities higher Asian food demand will provide. To improve the competitiveness of agriculture in Northern Australia, significant investment is needed, especially in securing water for irrigated agriculture and improving labor supply, supply chains, and infrastructure. Successfully addressing these challenges is the key for agriculture in Northern Australia to benefit from the rising food demand in Asia and other parts of the world. This concludes my presentation. Thank you very much.